Hi guys, welcome back. We are the heroes of our stories and our employers are the villains. They make it easy for us to cast them that way. They ignore our rights and use their power to control and harm us. That's every fairy tale villain in a nutshell. But real human behavior is a little more nuanced than fairy tales and our employers have reasons for even the most vile things they do. And I happen to think that understanding the why behind their actions is important. Not because they deserve our understanding, of course, because they don't. But understanding them and their motives can help us in a lot of ways. And today I want to talk about a few of those ways. First, understanding the why behind what they do can help us articulate the biases we're facing in a way other people can easily understand. For instance, if I'm facing harassment on the basis of gender, if my harasser is male, that's pretty easy for most people to understand. But what if my harasser is a female? Can women harass other women on the basis of gender? Of course they can. But it's easier to see that if I tell you things like, my female harasser happens to believe that there's only room for so many of us at the top. Or that she enjoys flexing her power and it's easier for her to get by with that with women than it is with the men who work for her. Or maybe she just doesn't like or identify with other women. All of that is context that can make it really clear to someone outside the situation that, yeah, sometimes females harass other females on the basis of gender. And that kind of context can also help your attorney. In court, they can probe those biases and maybe even trigger them so your judge gets a chance to see the discriminatory intent for themselves. But we do want to be sure that when we're laying out the why as context, we limit what we share to them and their discriminatory intent. For instance, if you say something like, my boss has harassed me ever since I turned down an invitation to go to lunch with her, that might prove she's an asshole, but it's not going to prove discrimination. Another benefit of understanding the why is that the more empathy we can show for our employer's concerns, the better our chances are going to be for working out a compromise without a big legal fight. But here again, we have to be careful. We want to be sure that in the process of expressing our understanding and empathy for them, we don't accept any of the blame for their actions. I learned that the hard way. The first time my boss ever expressed concern about my attendance was immediately after I requested reasonable accommodation. No way in hell I'm reasonably accommodating you, she said. You're, You're never, never here. here. Which wasn't true. But in the two years I was trying to get diagnosed, I had used more sick leave than normal. So rather than argue with her, I just admitted I have used a lot of sick leave. I meant it as a show of good faith in the hope that maybe we could move past her anger and into trying to resolve the situation that we were both in. But instead, she took it as proof that she was right all along. See, See you're a slacker, slacker and you admitted it. And NASA used that against me for the whole rest of the EEOC process. I still think that letting her know that I understood her concerns was a good move. In hindsight, I wish I'd said something like, I can see that you're really concerned about my attendance, and I'm really concerned about my health, so how can we resolve this? Of course, we can't always, but even if we can't resolve the situation directly with our employer, our understanding and good faith can help us get heard once our case gets to EEOC. One of the questions that EEOC asks us up front is, what remedies are you seeking? What I asked for was someone to facilitate a conversation with my boss about reasonable accommodation that addressed both our concerns. It was important for me to let EEOC and NASA know that I wasn't asking to be able to come and go as I pleased. I just wanted to have a conversation to see if we could arrive at a reasonable compromise. My EEOC counselor thought that was a reasonable request, so she offered to facilitate the conversation herself. But my boss refused to talk to her about it, just like she refused to talk to me. So my counselor got to see the discrimination for herself. Now, if I hadn't shown any empathy at all for my boss's concerns and went into counseling just talking about me, 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 and what I wanted, I'm not sure that my counselor would have volunteered to get involved. And I think my whole EEOC process would have gone down differently. But the way it happened, she did offer. And my boss's refusal went into her written report. That helped me all the way through the rest of the process. For instance, NASA was constantly screaming, abuse of process, abuse of process at me. Abuse of process is when we use the EEOC process to do something that it's not intended to do, like get us a lot of money or get us a promotion we don't deserve or get us out of discipline for something that we did wrong. Our claims can be thrown out for that kind of stuff. And NASA tried. They told my investigator that I was abusing the process and probably asked her to help improve it. 
But when I showed my investigator my original complaint form and the counselor's report that said all I was asking for was an interactive dialogue, that's exactly what the EEOC process is intended to do. So abuse of process never made it into my report of investigation. Over time, as more and more things like that happened, EEOC started to see that I was acting in good faith, and NASA wasn't. In the end, both my AJ and EEOC's Office of Federal Operations said so. I do want to say that showing good faith and being willing to address their concerns and showing some understanding for where they're coming from doesn't mean that we have to accept the blame for what they did. It doesn't mean we have to ignore our own needs or agree with them about anything. We still have to look after our own interests. And understanding the why behind what they're doing can help us do that in a bunch of ways. I'm going to be talking about a lot more of those ways in some future videos, but for today, I just wanted to introduce the concept and let you know that being willing to address their concerns goes a long way toward showing our good faith and illuminating their lack of it so EEOC can see that. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, take care and hang in. Fight smart and hang in to win.